and um, the different types of death, spiritual, physical, and eternal, or the second death, does not mean to cease to exist, just means separation. Okay? So let's talk about um, the... Um, <laughs> that was pretty funny. I had an extra blank page in between my notes. <laughs> How'd that happen? Okay. Yeah. The, oh, <laughs> I, I know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> when you said that, I thought, oh, my goodness. Yep. Get the blank. Get them in there. It was numbered. It just, it's left blank on purpose. All right. Let's talk about uh, the results of Adam's disobedience, the, the high treason, spiritual death overtaking. Um, the first thing is Adam had a change of nature. Now, when God created Adam, he was created in his likeness, his image after his kind. He was a spiritually alive unto God. He was uh, actually had the same spirit. God took his spirit and put into Adam. Okay. And so he had, but he had a change of nature. In John 8, 44, uh, Jesus said, ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will fulfill. Um, when Adam fell, he took on Satan's nature. We um, say it this way, just just to get the point across. And I understand, you know, it's it's kind of back terminology, but we use it just to kind of awaken you to this this point. Um, Adam was the first man to be born again. He was born from life unto death. Okay, he had a change of nature. That's what Satan became his spiritual father. You are of your father, the devil. Okay. And um, he, before the fall, Adam was of his father, God. Okay? But after the fall, and, uh, because, and, and, be, and the result of the fall was, Satan became uh, his spiritual father. Um, John 8, 44, you are your father, the devil. The lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. And because there is no truth in him, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is, the, he is a liar and the father of it. Okay. So Jesus makes it pretty, you know, your, your daddy's a devil. You know, oh, we're all God's children. No. And we're not. It was God's plan for us to all be his children. But the fall interrupted that. Okay. So that's why Jesus told Nicodemus, ye must be born again, to be born from death back unto life. All right? Um, and so he took on Satan's nature. We see the effects of that in Cain murdering Abel. Okay? Um, we could no longer partake of the tree of life. Man, man when I say we, I'm talking about man in general. Uh, had to approach, had to approach God. Could not remember when uh, Adam, after Adam was sin, the Bible talks about God came down in the cool of the day and called for him, Adam, Adam. And uh, Adam said, "You know, um, God says, why are you, why, why are you basically, why are you hiding?" He said, uh, "I was afraid and hid myself. Why were you afraid? Did you partake of? He, of course, he knew he did. But did you partake of the uh, of the of the fruit of the tree? I told you not to." And, uh, well, you know, really it's not my fault. The woman you gave me, she bid me eat and I did eat. And then the woman goes, wait a second, it's not all my fault. The serpent beguiled me and I did eat. Everybody starts passing the buck. Why? They're just like the devil. They don't take responsibility. They're liars, etc. Okay? So his nature has changed. Satan becomes master and lord of mankind. He is a, now man falls into this position of being a creature of sin, of fear, of doubt. And here's, here's the most um, disheartening, terrible thing of it all, with no means to redeem himself. Okay? Good acts can't save him. Ephesians 2 tells us that. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Only the new birth can redeem man. Man has, no, man has no path to redemption. Even with all the sacrificial system instituted and all the animals that were shed, it could not redeem man. It could atone. See, atone, atonement is not 
a New Testament theological word or, or, or doctrine. Because atonement means to cover. In the Old Testament, God covered a multitude of sins, but they weren't washed away. They weren't cleansed. Okay? Um, Jesus' blood cleansed us. Hallelujah. But under the, under the Old Covenant, they were atoned. They were covered, but they weren't redeemed. They had to wait. They had a promissory note. Um, so Jesus says in John 3, 16, you, uh, Nicodemus, you know, Nicodemus comes to him and says, Master, um, um, we know that thou art come from God, for no man can do the miracles that you do except God be with him. And Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of, of God. And Nicodemus goes, uh, well, how can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb? And Jesus said, are you a master of, of Israel and not know this, the difference? Hello? Are you a master of Israel and not know these things? Go here, go home. Is this not true? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And um, he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so Jesus says the only way to um, eliminate the effects of the fall of man is to go through the same process. He had to be born again through communion with Satan by committing high treason, coming into Satan's kingdom, taking on Satan's nature. In order to come out of that, he had to take on God's nature, be born again by God. Okay? Uh, that was the only way. That was the only path. It was the only means. Romans 5 says, <clears throat> now these are the consequences of, of spiritual death. Romans 5 verse 14 uh, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. But not as an offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be bit dead, much more the grace of God and the gift of grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ hath abounded unto many. And it was not, um, and it was, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is to many, uh, is of many offenses unto justification. For by one man's offense, death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Death reigned over mankind. It ruled. It dominated. Because Adam sinned, that passed that on to all humanity, and they were they were lost uh, in this place of knowing that they are they are without God, the emptiness without God, the the lack of wholeness or completeness. Man was not designed to be in communion with Satan. He was designed to be in communion with God. Everything that Satan is, is opposed to how man was created. It's destructive. Designed to be destructive. Satan is evil. Okay? Now, and so man's dead. He's let out hope without God in this world. He needs a transformation. Okay? So the results of our redemption from spiritual death, first of all, we have a new nature. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature or a new creation or a new species of being that never existed before. Amen. So he's a new creation. Um. And all things have passed away, and all things have become new, and all things are of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God, who hath reconciled us to himself. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm kind of halfway quoting. I want to make sure I'm getting it all right. 
Sometimes you get to quoting and you leave stuff out. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things passed away. All things become new. Verse 18 starts out and says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, or that is to know that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses against them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are the ambassadors for Christ. When? Now. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray, in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him sin for us. And if you're reading along and you're looking there, you say, well, the words to be are there, not in the Greek. That's why they're italicized. They were added. They tell us so you would know they weren't in the original language. Okay? They thought it would help make it read better. And so they, they took that liberty, but they also, at, in taking that liberty, wanted to make sure you understood that was not, those words are not in the original Greek. Okay? So I like to read it without the italicized words. For he hath made him sin for us who knew no sin that he might be made the righteousness of God in him. Now, very interesting here, because he did not make him sins. He made him sin. He put on him the nature of sin. Okay? So it's not just the sins. The sins are the result or the consequence of the nature of sin. And so he was made sin he took on the nature of sin. He took our nature. Not just the actions or the, the results of what our nature does, you know, you know, 14 billion different sins. He took on the nature. He took on what it meant to be identified with Satan. He took on what it meant to be, um, you know, reconciled to Satan and not to God the Father. And so he was, he was made sin for us. Who knew no sin? Jesus never sinned. He did not commit acts of sin. Hello. He didn't do it. All right. So he's not, he didn't take, he took on the nature. All right. He took on the nature. For us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Hallelujah. So we have the righteous son of God, second person of the Godhead, taking on our nature. Now that, in, in this context, would basically be translated as in order so, or, or in order to, or in order so that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. <clears throat> it was an identification swap. He took our sin to bear them to the cross to be judged for our sin, to pay the price for our sin so that we could take on his righteousness. So that we could be reconciled to the Father. So that we could be one with him. Amen? And so the, the result of our redemption, the, the, spirit, the result of our redemption from spiritual death is we now take on the nature of the Father. John 10.10, 10, Jesus says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Okay? And so Jesus says that um, I am come that they might have life. He says here, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, destroy. He's talking about the characteristical uh, characteristic and nature of Satan to steal, to kill, to destroy. Okay. And then he, that's, so that's the thesis in this, in this statement, your, 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 uh, the, the, <laughs> this thesis statement is the thief comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. The, the antithetical statement is I have come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Okay, so we have we have the the thesis 
Satan is the destroyer. Satan is the killer. Satan is the um, huh? thief. Thank you. The thief comes down. But it's kill, steal, and destroy. Kill, steal, destroy. So that establishes. We, say, we need to read the Bible and just take everything in that it says and understand cause, because preachers will get slack or they'll adopt a narrative that they're, they just believe just because they believe it because grandma said it. You know, well, my grandma loved the Lord and she was a good Christian. So like Andy Griffith. That was good eating. But grandma was a good Christian and grandma was wrong. And a lot of times she was just flat out, plain, no holes barred, wrong. Loved the Lord. Did, I mean, there was no questioning her love for Jesus. But Grandma just believed whatever somebody told her. And you can get in trouble that way. I was told, I, I, think I, couldn't, I couldn't quite get the scripture in my head the other day when someone this. she told me I needed to be rooted and grounded in holiness. And what she meant was Pentecostal holiness. The burlap sacks, never cut the hair, no makeup. And your ankles better not show. And Lord Jesus, if a man wore a short sleeve shirt, he was going to die and go to hell. He showed his hair, the arm, hair arm. Hair, the arm hair. Yeah, it was a sin to have your arms. Lord have mercy. Where was that in the Bible? If you found it, you let me know, okay? So Jesus says, you know, he, he comes and goes, and he's, he's doing a couple things here. One is he's establishing who he is, but he tells us that the thief is stealing, killing, and destroying. I'm come. I am come. What? That they may have life and have it more abundantly. Now, the word life there comes from the Greek Zoe. You've heard this before. And Vine says, in, in defining the word Zoe, of life as a principle. Life in the absolute sense. Life as God has it, that which, that which, or, or that life, that life which the Father has in himself, which he gave to the incarnate Son to have in himself, and which was the Son manifested, and, and which, that is this life, he manifested in the world. Now, wow. Stop there and think about this definition. The Father is this life. <clears throat> it's given to the incarnate Son to have in Himself. And that is the very life which He manifested in this world. What did that life do? It healed the sick, cast out devils, raised the dead, defied the forces of nature. Amen. Brought blessing, deliverance, freedom. That life in manifestation, he manifested that life. Think about it. That life, that Zoe life. That's the same life that Jesus said, the head of the church who did not have a PhD or any other degrees. You know, we think when somebody's got a PhD, they got to be right. It's so like Brother Hagin used to say, he said, I finally figured out PhD meant post hole digger. Because a common post hole digger had more sense than some of these people. Amen. All right. You know, PhD is the philosophy of doctor, uh, of, um, doc, a doctor of philosophy, meaning that you are supposed to be an expert, not just a doctor of having the knowledge, you are the expert in its application, et cetera. You are a Doctor of philosophy. Yeah, which is great. I'm not against having education. But if your education supersedes the word of God, then it's too high. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Jesus tells us that the thief is out there stealing, killing, and destroying. I'm come that you might have life in the absolute sense. Life as my father has it that he gave me to have in myself, and that which you have seen me manifesting as I walk and minister. And not only that, he said, have it more abundantly or to the full. 
Hallelujah. And have it to the full. You know, in other words, you know, more abundantly. One translation says, and have it to the full. He wants to fully manifest that life in us. Because well, un it undoes what Satan did with Adam in the garden. Man became fearful. Man became full of doubt. Man became full of unbelief. Man became uh, angry, murderous, liar. Okay? And flesh ruled, flesh dominated. And Satan became master of his life through his flesh. Because he had his spirit under control, and they manifest and use the flesh against man. And now Jesus comes and says, but I'm come, or I'm come. It, it's the but really is understood because it, it's, you know, a, the, a thesis and an antithesis or antithesis. I always like to say antithesis because it helps you understand the word. It's technically antithesis. Okay, antithesis. All right, which is the antithesis. Opposite. Okay, um, now I can't even think how to say the word right. Antithesis, all right, or antithetical. It was antithetical, all right. <clears throat> he sets that up in direct contradiction to Satan's, who Satan is. Stealing, killing, and destroying, which meant God, he had wrought in man. Man was became evil. Man became evil thoughts continually, the Bible says. His thoughts are evil continuously. He's, he's so absorbed with the nature of Satan. Flesh driven, you know. Um, Satan begins to use man's flesh against him by driving. They're, they're no longer just, um, you know, strong desires. You remember we talked about the Greek word for desire or lust, the lust. Is used um, good and it's used bad. The context of it determines. Okay, you can have good desires. Well, you know that word is the same word in the Greek as lust. The word for desire and the word for lust are the same Greek word. It's the context of how they're used. But Satan began to use the flesh and use it against man, and became so driven by his inordinate affections and lust and evil. It drove him to do things. People kill people because they're angry. And Cain killed, he slew his brother because he was angry. He was jealous. My, why wasn't my sacrifice good enough? Because I didn't have any blood, stupid. Hello? There's no blood sacrifice there. There's no... It don't work. Corn oil don't cover. Hello? All, all Cain had to do was take and go barter with his brother for a lamb who was a keeper of sheep with his crops and get a lamb to go sacrifice. He thought, well, if he can grow lambs, that's good enough. My crops are good enough. And they weren't. And so Cain got mad and killed Abel. In a jealous fit. Where'd that come from? It didn't come from God. It came from his family's new spiritual father, the devil. And so man, when again man gets redeemed, he gets born again. His nature now take the, the new nature now begins to take over. That's why we're to renew, renew our mind to the word of God. <clears throat> to put off the old man and put on the new. That new man is created in righteousness and true holiness, as the scripture says, and start living from there, living out of that, that nature of the spirit. Well, it takes time to do that because your mind has been, you know, um, I said this the other day, unrenewed. So when man was created, he had a mind where he could commune with God, name all the animals. We talked about, you know, it was, it was no mugga ugga. Remember that? We had that, the mugga ugga, -ugga sermon? He wouldn't walk around going, ooh, went on the Geico commercial or anything. You know, being judged. Easy enough that a caveman can do it. Remember those Geico commercials? Then they landed on the gecko for the Geico. Now the gecko is a spokesman for the gecko. The, uh, the gecko is the Geico spokesperson. I still like the cave guys. <coughs> um, 
But man was created at a higher level. But he fell because his mind began to become what? The flesh was driving him and his mind was being um, unrenewed, as it were, from the life of God. The mind of Christ was no longer in there. Satan was influencing the thoughts. And he, be, he began to have ev evil imaginations and evil thoughts to satisfy the lust of his flesh because they had become inordinate. They had become evil. Okay? So when you get born again, your mind is not renewed. It must be renewed. Okay? Which we will get to. Um, and so Jesus said he's come to give us this life and that we can live it to the full. Aren't you glad we can live it to the full? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in 1 John chapter 4, um, John writes, says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Wow. So now we've had this change in nature. God's on the inside of us. And in the same way that man's soul progressively deteriorated into just an evil continual, we now are reversing that by renewing our mind. But your nature has changed. And out of that nature, the life of God is affecting everything about you. The life of God on the inside of you is you, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. There's the greater one on the inside. Amen. Where your mind is, is, you know, trained up until the time you get saved, it's trained to be carnal. Yes. Flesh ruled. Amen? Amen? Flesh ruled. Carnal. Everything your flesh wants to do, the mind says, okay, let's see how we can get it done, baby. But then the life of God comes in you, and all of a sudden, there's a conscience that's going, no, we can't do that. And your body's saying, why not? And your mind's going, yeah, why not? Because it's not right. We don't care. <laughs> but as you begin to renew your mind to the Word of God, you begin to change that. Amen. Um, 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Now, I'm not closing. Don't, don't leave. <laughs> I'm just quoting that scripture in the middle of the sermon. Okay. I'm still here. Don't walk away. All right. Amen. Amen. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. So what's happening? Man's been, he's been changed from a shriveling, conniving, evil, murdering, lying, hiding the shadows to now this person who overcomes. He overcomes the world. And the world's effect on his flesh. He now becomes an overcomer. Because greater is he that's in him than he that's in the world. This whole new package here. Amen. He's not left. He's not left to the authority and commands and demands of the devil. He now has a different ruler. He has a different master. He has a different way of life. And it's the way of, it's, it's the, the way of Zoe. Amen? Before, after the fall, man's hiding himself from God. He's covering himself. He's hiding, running from the presence of God. Now, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are welcomed in his presence. We're welcome to be in with him. We commune with him. Amen. Glory to God. Remember that old, uh, the old hymn. Um, I go to the garden alone. 
Yeah. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other could ever. And I forgot the word, no, or whatever. <clears throat> but my voice was going really down on that. I'm lo I was losing it. But we was, I go to the garden alone. Hallelujah. Amen. We can go to the garden with God now. Before man's hiding from God. Man doesn't even know if he's welcome there. Man's afraid of God. We get these ideas, you know, even when you're unsaved, you cuss and use God's name in vain, and you're jumping because you think lightning is on its way. The grease spots you right there, take you out. Hello? But now we're welcome to come with boldness. Come with boldness into his presence. Hallelujah. Not only that, he sent his spirit into us where we now cry, Daddy, Father, Abba, Father. Hallelujah. The tender, caring fatherhood of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. We can approach him, 1 Peter um, 1, on the basis, glory to God, 1 Peter chapter 1, looking down into verse 18. For as much then as we know that we were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation. Now remember, conversation was an old Elizabethan word at the time that it was. That this was uh, the King James was translated. It actually meant lifestyle, manner of life, how you live. Okay, so um, as silver and gold from your vain way of living. Okay, it does not mean Penny and Ellie talking after church. Not here. Okay, that's not what it meant. All right. Received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Hallelujah. So now we approach God out. We approach God, the Father, through the blood of Jesus. We don't come on our merits. We're covered in the blood. Our righteousness was as filthy rags. And yes, it is. But I don't come to God in mine. He made him sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. I come in his righteousness. So where before I had to be afraid, it was it was an awkward moment. You know, you were afraid that, you know, the scepter was going to not be raised or, you know, it was going to be pointed at you and your toes. You came in illegally. You came in unwelcomed. And, and, and the king, instead of welcoming you, took you out. But now you come. Not clothed in your righteousness. They were as filthy rags. They were tattered. They were useless. They had no standing before God. They were burnt up in the fires of his glory. And he clothed us in his robe of righteousness. And now we enter in because of the blood of Jesus to the very throne room of God the Father. And we can walk right up to the throne. And if the Father were to even say, why do you presume to stand here? Jesus would say, because my blood is on the mercy seat. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, God sees us through the blood on the mercy seat of heaven. Glory to God. No longer banished from the presence of God. No longer able to commune with God. No longer having to have someone commune for us. You see, the earthly priesthood is done. There'll be a renewing of it during the tribulation with the Jews. You know, they've already got red heifers now. Okay. The dome of the rock is not on the foundation of the Temple Mount, a site. 
they're 300 feet away. They, they, missed, they, missed, they missed it. Their whole purpose was to build the, the Dome of the Rock on top of the foundations of Solomon's temple so the temple couldn't be rebuilt. But I'm guessing the Holy Ghost got in there and took their engineers and messed them up. Okay? And on the inside of the Dome of the Rock in Arabic, it says over and over and over and over again in a circle all the way up. There is no Son of God. 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 And they're so confident in the fact that there is no Son of God, they went and bricked up. Oh, was it the Western Wall? The Eastern? I forget which. The Eastern Wall Gate. Because there is no Son of God who could come through the gate. If there is no Son of God, why are you blocking up the gate? Just saying. And, stupid, if there is a Son of God, do you think your brick's going to keep them out? Shows you how stupid the devil bunch is. I mean, really? Come on, folks. There is no Son of God. Then why are you blocking up the gate? Who are you trying to keep out? The Son of God. And if he is the Son of God, your bricks, I hate to tell you, pal, he'll just, he'll just go right through them. Hello. <laughs> oh, well. You can confess it all you want to, but he is the Son of God. And you will confess it. I can imagine the, the whole interior of the Dome of Rock falling as every tongue confesses, every knee bows, and every tongue confesses that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Arrayed in all of his glory and majesty, welcoming us into the Father's presence, which you could do right now. Hallelujah. And so your nature has changed. Your family. He's been, we've been reconciled. We've been reconciled through the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Man approaches them by the blood of Jesus. The whole ninth chapter of the book of Hebrews. I mean, glory to God. My favorite chapter in the Bible, just saying. I didn't used to say just saying, but my wife started saying it. Every time she wants to finish a conversation. And I figured out what just saying is. Ain't no need to say another word because I'm right. Well, it's such, 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 just saying. What am I supposed to say to that? Nothing. Be like Schultz. Nothing? I said nothing, kind of Hogan. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise God. We look down, you know, um, into Hebrews chapter 9 down. We'll just go down to verse um, 10, 11. But Christ being a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with the hands, that is to say not of this building, or we, um, um, we could actually say not of um, we'll pray maybe earth or I'm, I'm looking for the um, margin here. I got a marginal crea of this creation. Okay, so now the earth. Now remember, when you study, you'll find out the Bible says that um, Moses made the tabernacle according to the pattern which he saw in heaven. See, he looked, he saw into heaven and saw the heavenly, and they do, made the earthly tabernacle after that pattern. So every, there was the Holy of Holies, there was the holy place, there was the outer court, and he saw all that. That's why we say this, uh, and here's some understanding without going too deep into Leviticus and all that stuff, that all things in the tabernacle were cleansed the way they are, were in heaven, had to be in heaven. The blood of the animals was the only place as far as the mercy seat. It was not on the, the where, where God sat. Telling us that the, the, the Adam's authority went to the, as far as the mercy seat, but not to the throne itself. So in heaven, when Jesus took his blood, he cleansed all the heavenly utensils according to the pattern. 
and he cleansed the mercy seats as far as his blood had to go. Sin had not tainted the throne because God did not give him authority over the throne. Up to, but not including. Okay? So that's why the Bible tells us there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came in among them. Well, he could go all the way up. That's where his authority was. Went all the way up to what was the, the mercy seat, but he couldn't touch the throne. That's why when Jesus came, Satan offered him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them if he would bow down and worship him. For they, they are hit, they, they've all been delivered into his hand, and he can deliver into whoever he wants to. It, the lie was not that he had the authority. The lie was he would give it to him. Okay? So people say, so he's a liar. He didn't have. Yes, he did. Jesus didn't say, you don't have that authority. It wouldn't have been any temptation. Being the son of God, he would know Satan had the authority to turn over all those kingdoms to him. But he didn't. The way he did have the authority, Jesus did not say anything about it, didn't argue with him, didn't combat him. Well, you know, you, you don't have authority to do that. He just said, um, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. Satan, think about it. We kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of rabbit trailing around. <clears throat> when Satan offered Jesus all the kingdoms of the earth, that's what he came for. That's what Jesus was here to get. All the Adam had turned over to him. And the glory of them. And here's Satan trying to cut a deal. Let me let me take the D Kim, D King Jimmy here. We're going D King Jimmy, not decontaminate, but D King King Jimmy. Satan says, "I know what you're here for, and I've got the authority. Now, if you will bow down and worship me, I'll give them to you. And you won't have to do all that other, going through the cross and suffering and all that. I'll give it to you." The lie was, if he were to have bowed down and worshipped Satan, Satan would have taken the one thing he couldn't get, the throne itself. That's what he was after. In that moment of the cosmos, of all eternity, wrapped up at this one point, the entire state of eternity lie right there in that moment seeing all the kingdoms of the earth and the glory of them and offered to have them handed to him if he would bow down and worship him. Wow. There it's sitting right there. Aren't you glad Jesus wasn't flesh driven? He didn't believe in hungry jack instant potatoes. I don't have to do all that other stuff. I don't have to become sin for, who knew no sin. I don't have to go to the cross. I don't have to be judged for man's sin. I don't have to bear the weight of all that. Here they are. All I got to do is reach out and say, okay, I worship you, Lucifer. And they're mine. Except the moment he did that, God became subordinate to the devil and Satan took over. If you go back and study Satan in Ezekiel, I will ascend my throne into the heavens. I'll be as the most high. He wanted the throne of God. He's after it all. There it is. Man would have been eternally damned. There would have been no redeemer because God would have become subordinate to Satan. That can't be. It was a temptation. It's not a bona fide temptation if it can't be done. Jesus would know if it was. Not one time did he tell the devil, that's not a real temptation. Hello? That's not a real temptation. Hello? Turn the stones into bread. Jesus said. It's written that God, that man should not live by bread alone, but out of every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now remember, the three temptations that Adam and Eve fell in were the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And all these, that's the three things. And I'm kind of a little bit off track here, but it, 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 it fits into all this. 
Okay? New Testament talks about, you know, these, these three things, the lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. They saw that the fruit was good to eat, pleasant to the eyes, and desired to make one wise. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. The three temptations of Jesus in the wilderness were the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Okay? Lust of the flesh turned the stone into bread. Lust of the eyes. He showed him all the kings of the world and the glory of them and the pride of life. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down. From hence for it's written that the angels shall bear thee up lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. And each time Jesus responded, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou worship. Amen. And then thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. He overcame. He had to overcome all those things that Adam fell in, failed in. And they were all bona fide, genuine temptations. He hadn't eaten in 40 days. I guarantee you, he could he'd think, you know, man, uh, I am God, and I can turn these stones into bread. And the best bread you ever made, ate, too. I mean, like right out of the oven with a stick of butter. Now, if you know, Brother Copeland used to be a, real, a fairly large man. He said he would go to the bread factory, get the bread right out, went right out when they got. He'd buy it right out of it, like almost coming out of it, and put a stick of butter in it and eat it, the whole loaf. <clears throat> and then God got on him by his weight, and he he uh, he got things straight. But here we have lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Jesus had to overcome all those things. Amen. Glory to God. You go here, you go home. And so, but how? In doing that, he made the way for us to live free from the authority of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Glory to God. Amen. Um, so here in Hebrews chapter 9, Christ become a, <laughs> I just got through the 11th verse, I didn't get any further, did I? Being become a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, that is the heavenly, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, not of this creation, not of this earth, neither <clears throat> by the blood of bulls and goats, or blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in, how often? Once, into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and goats, and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctified to the purifying of the flesh. I love this. How much more? Shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience to serve the living God? So now, there's been a made, way made for us to enter in. Through the Spirit of God, through the blood of Jesus, it's been applied into our life. We now have had this nature change, and in that nature change, we are now family. We're not merely servants of God. We are the family of God. Behold, John declares, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think about it. Under the, under the law, a priest had to, cook, to go to God for them. They had to bring their sacrifices. They had to do all the things they were commanded to do. They had to have the right kind of sacrifice. It had to be judged blemish, blemishless. And do all the things that the law told them they had to do to get covered for another year. I'm talking about this. Atonement was an expensive deal. 
You had to go to Jerusalem every year. You had to bring all those sacrifices. You had to be doing right. You had, I mean, and if you couldn't travel one, you had to buy one when you got there. And there was a markup market. Hello? You had, you had the temple priest marketplace where they had a, you know, I don't know how big their market was. Apparently it was pretty high. Jesus called them a bunch of thieves. Hello? It's like when they build, you know, build a car. Now, I don't know if you know this. Now, some of you got newer cars. You got all this electronic stuff. They have two batteries. They have an electronics battery and your regular battery. And it used to be that your regular battery was enough to run the electronics. But no. Now you got to have an electronics battery. Because the regular batteries don't the last three. Remember, remember the old diehard 72 month batteries? They'd last six years. <laughs> Buddy, three years to the day. Boom. <laughs> Nathan, had, Nathan had his battery go out on his car about a month ago. He went out to crank the car, wouldn't crank. Boom. I mean, when it died, it just went boom. Well, he'd had it changed three years earlier. That month, I'm telling you, three years. Well, but see, he also had the electronics battery. It's up under a, a tire well or a buried in a, a thing under your seat. Seat's got to come out and it's got to be taken out. Or the tire well, the whole un, tire well has to come out to get to that one little battery extra. So to change the batteries was $650. It was not go down there, buy you a $170 battery, pop the terminals off, slap it in, put it back on, and you're back on the road again. Yeah. $200 labor to change the batteries. Mm -hmm. How come I got off on the batteries? I was going to say something about my car and the electronic battery or whatever. <clears throat> but I got to think about his. Yeah. That'll mess up your uh, thinking for the day. I just need to put another battery in. Well, you, you can't even take that. In his car, you can't even just take the regular battery out. It's got all this stuff on top of it that's attached to it that's got to be taken off. And if you don't take off enough, you don't take off the neutral on it and neutral on the electronics battery, you can hit something and short the whole electric system out. Okay, I know how I got on it. Temple Marketplace thieves. They're like the car people. They build stuff that you got to spend all this kind of money to keep the dealerships in business. Why don't we just put a bigger battery in the car? Have it call for a bigger battery with more amps. No. Mm -mm. We're going to put two batteries in because it'll cost them more money to have to take that whole tire well out, take the tire off, take the tire well out, get up here and undo two things from the battery up under there so we can get our dealerships that $180, $180 per hour uh, book fee. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And so the Temple Marketplace, so you're, uh, you, I mean, you look, you just don't take those cars to your shade tree mechanic and have him go out there and switch it out. Because if he doesn't do it right, you cook your whole $2,500 electrical system. You fry it. Because they're like everything else, five milliamp little circuit boards. They're computers. So, the, you know, they got you. Well, see, the priests were doing this long before microchips. <laughs> they were showing up at the temple. And if they didn't have their sacrifice because it was too much to, to journey, they were allowed to purchase it. So what happens? They mark it up. You know, Steve, you really want some, some, some atonement this year? Well, let me tell you, pal, you're going to have to spend an extra 25% just to get atoned. <laughs> That's how it's working here, baby. Now, now listen, I don't want to do that. That's fine. Got a guy right over here. He wants his redemption. He'll, he'll, he'll pay me 25%. No, 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 no. I'll give you 30%. No, I'll give you 35%. i give more. Now we've got a bid going on. 
who could get the last sacrificial lamb of the week. But Jesus came to give us eternal redemption for free. And they had lived under the system where they were bound at the behest of a crooked priesthood. And that's why Jesus got ticked off. I mean, he came in there, and they, and when he tick, he, they ticked him off, he ticked them off, and they spent the rest of their days. How are we going to take him out? Because he's messing, he's messing up the whole system here, guys. This little rebel preacher out there is going to mess us all up. I mean, you know, we got, we got our gig going on. We get free food, free housing. Hello. We're getting all this free stuff. And then we're getting, we're getting money on the slide. We're just living lasciviously <coughs> off of a system that was designed <coughs> to take, to serve the people of God and have a priesthood who were the stewards of it. Hello. In serving God. They did not have land. The tribe of Levi did not have land. They lived off the, they lived off of the priesthood. But they weren't happy satisfied with that, so they wanted more. So they started sticking it to the people. But Jesus came in and it messed that all up. Amen. And they they obviously I guarantee you they became embittered by the the abuse of the priesthood. Nathan could have gotten embittered over his. Oh, he won't happy, let me tell you. $650. Yep. I got to get mine changed now. I'm getting a little light coming on that tells me my little electronics battery has to be changed. Now, my regular battery, I can change because it's just a regular old up there in the, up there in the front. But they're going to have to go into the seat and all this mess to get the other one out. So it's going to be um, like $250 to change that one little battery. Yep. Yep. Thief. You bunch of money, grubbing, dog, thieves. What's that? Okay. Oh, 25,000? 29,000. Well, that's, that's a different kind of battery. That's the whole car. And they put pool in it and throw the thief out. You think they would just toss the coolant in? $29,000 to change a bolt of an electronic car battery. Oh, yeah. And they're so good for the environment when they tear up. They're, I mean, I, I, don't get me started on greenies. <laughs> Just don't get me started. Because it's so illogical, you know. It's going to save the environment. So we're going to clear, how many acres are clearing down here for the Toyota battery place? The Randolph, Guilford Randolph mega site, 1,100 acres to be able to put, build car, electric car batteries. They're mining the uh, materials in China, just open mining, open, just digging out um, all these mines. And you, they're fussing about the um, limitations of fossil fuels. How much of that stuff do you think is in the ground you're dig digging up? Because when it goes, all these electric cars, when their batteries die, it's done. <laughs> it's over. There's no replacement batteries. We'll have new technology by then. <laughs> anyway, we're just starting to ramble off the subject here. $29,000. The car didn't cost but twenty. We now come by the blood of Jesus to the throne of God. Hallelujah. Life reigns over all who will but believe. Amen. Glory to God. So um, this page is blank intentionally. Probably means for me to stop right there. That's what it was, Dick. See, it was my stopping page. Stop right here. Pick up there next week. All right. All right, guys. We'll pick up with poverty and, and sickness later or next week. Praise the Lord. Receive tonight's offering. You need an offering envelope. See back in front of you. Give it electronically. Go ahead and put that in the uh, um, cash app or PayPal. Hallelujah. 
I thank all of y'all for joining us tonight. Um, if you would like to give to Faith and, uh, Faith and Victory Church, <laughs> Expedition Church, Hallelujah, of the Triad, glory to God. I forgot, recently I saw, I saw there was something, paperwork or something about Faith and Victory Church, and I thought, oh, oh I know what it was. Somebody's giving to our, on our PayPal account. That it's, it's still going through on the old name of Faith and Victory Church. It's coming to us because we changed the names with PayPal, okay? Um, but it's, it's coming in under that. So I'm like, wow, where'd you come from? <laughs> We're glad you came. Hallelujah. Now, I'm, I'm guessing if they're giving to us that way, then they're, they're watching us and, you know, getting ministered to by us, the church. I'm hoping so, you know, not just kind of a random thing, but they actually they're getting ministered to. Praise God. But um, Expedition Church, you know, we have PayPal, uh, Expedition, or give at ExpeditionTriad.org, give at ExpeditionTriad.org, or um, Cash App. Dollar sign, expedition triad. Dollar sign, expedition triad. <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we bless the people as they give. Thank you. You minister life to their finances, and they live in an overcoming state in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Go ahead, Brother Jeff. Thank you all for joining us tonight. Remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our God bless you. Good night. See you next time here at Expedition Church of the Triad.